so much. Okay, we have been talking bugs a lot this morning, but I think this is, uh, this is my favorite part of the conversation right here. Bugs in religion. Okay, you don't think we can make a tie-in? Oh, <laughs> yes, we can. Dr. Michael Wall is here from the San Diego Natural History Museum today. What's happening at the Nat? Uh, we've got a lot of things going on right now. We have our King Tut exhibit, and we were looking at ways that we could tie in our natural history expertise uh, with the King Tut exhibit, and so we decided to put together a lecture on insects and religion that's going to be happening on now, November Now, you're the curator 20th. of entomology. I am the curator. You're the bug guy. I'm the chief bug boy. What, yep. what in the world uh, leads you into that field? Because I, I've met many entomologists here on the show that yeah. are always fascinated yeah. by this field. Yeah, yeah. I started, I was always a nature nut as a kid. I kind of ran feral in the woods and stuff like that. <laughs> and so I grew up kind of loving plants and eventually that actually transformed into a love of insects. Okay, so you're going to do this lecture on the 20th yep. uh, of this month, and, yep. and the public is welcome, 7 o'clock on the 20th yep. at the San Diego Natural History yep. Museum. Correct. Uh, you're going to want to come out to this lecture, and, because yep. we'll give you a little taste of it right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, is, is the title of the lecture, is it actually uh, Insects in Religion from... Uh, sacred scarabs to manna from heaven. Exactly. Okay, exactly. that's the title. Yeah. <laughs> Take it away, doctor. Take it away, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Exactly. So, I mean, certainly, I think if, when you mention insects and religion, one that easily comes to mind for people is uh, the plagues. Absolutely, of Egypt. locusts. Egypt. Exactly. So we've got locusts, but then there was also a plague of lice and there are a plague of flies. And we, can and we can look into Christian religion and see multiple references to uh, insects in parables. Uh, go to the ant thou sluggard is one of the, uh, you know, something that refers to the industrialness of ants. Uh, but then also when we look at, take a step outside of Christianity and do a variety of other types of religions and folklores, we see uh, very similar stories that use insects kind of as a metaphor, whether it be for metamorphosis or rebirth in the afterlife. So uh, one example I brought with me is uh, there's a little cicada in here that I might be able to pull out of here. And well, you know what? If you hold yeah, it right up there, just leave it there. Right She'll, there. Uh, yeah, but you'll find it. So a lot of people yeah. are familiar with these cicadas. They're the 13-year cicadas on the East Coast, but they're throughout the world. And you can see here, this is kind of the last stage of the cicada before it emerges with wings into a, into a new life. Right. And so in, in ancient China... Uh, they would actually put tongue amulets on the, into the mouths of the dead that were shaped like cicadas as kind of a type of imitative magic to, to help guide to the, the spirit towards metamorphosis okay. into the afterlife. Okay, that's uh, fascinating. Now, we've got to touch on the scarabs because yeah. it, it's in the title of your lecture, first Absolutely. off. But yeah. also, anybody that's seen the movie uh, The Mummy... <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> they know you don't exactly. mess with scarabs. You don't mess with scarabs. <laughs> and that was a little bit of probably artistic license on the, on the part of Hollywood with uh, the, their use of scarabs. But certainly, scarabs play a major role in uh, Egyptology and, and the Egypt's, Egyptians' beliefs. And it has to do with, there's a, there's a number of things, but the, the scarab beetles are actually dung beetles, and they roll balls of dung around. Right. And this was, uh, this, the Egyptians saw the similarity to this in the, trans, the, the, the transit of the sun across the sky during the day. Oh, because I, I would have been much more literal in my interpretation. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you you know, know, we're all just pushing, you know, what around. Yeah, day. exactly. Yeah, That's yeah, a yeah, okay. day in the life. You know? <laughs> okay. But, but, oh, the Egyptians are much more colorful then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But because of this, they, they began to, in a sense, worship the scarab as, as the, as the the, I guess, kind of like horses that took the, the sun across the, the sky. So they don't actually crawl in through your shoe and up your leg? No, and they don't. They don't burrow under the skin <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> oh, from darn. inside out. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's one myth destroyed yep, right there. Yep. Um, what about that, uh, and, and this is not and nothing to do with religion, but sure. what was that thing that went into the guy's ear in the Wrath of Khan and oh, yeah. burrowed, into his, that bug that <laughs> burrowed I, into his brain? I think that was from another planet, but I think it was supposed to, uh, it was supposed to mimic the, what they call earwigs, which uh, there is some urban mythology associated with earwigs that if they went into your ear, you would go uh, bonkers, which I think is what happened to, I think that was uh, not Sulu, but the other guy, um, Chekhov. Chekhov. Yes. Mr. Chekhov. <laughs> uh, look, I know you're going to have an absolute yeah. blast of a time uh, with this lecture. It's yeah. really going to be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
it's, it, whether you're a member or not, uh, everybody's welcome. I think yep. it's a few dollars more if you're yep. not a member. Yep. You Correct. really should be a member of the Natural History yeah, Museum. Well, but what, what do you get when you, you become a member of the museum? Well, um, you get free admission throughout the year, um, and then also discounts on a variety of, uh, of our lectures and other, other programs like summer camps and, and our uh, d winter camps and spring camps, and then uh, also some special kind of very recently we had our annual meeting that was members only annual meeting where you get a behind the scenes look you get to see all these insects back in the collections all all the behind the scenes work that we do at the oh it's so museum. fun i have a retired dentist friend of mine that's uh, just brushing off fossils right now and he's in heaven <laughs> just <laughs> absolutely good. having you know good, if, you see, good. if you see mark brown upstairs okay. to working up okay. there be sure and tell him i, I said will hi. Say hi all right uh, dr michael wall thank you so much yeah, uh, get pleasure. out there on november the 20th uh, that's when the lecture is, and you'll again, you'll just have a blast. But become a member of the San Diego Natural History Museum. Thank you Great. so much. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Up